Hello everybody, my name's Dick Coughlin and I know it's been a long time since I did a proper video, I apologise for that, the last month was not too, it was a bit, uh, for reasons I won't go into, you know the fucking drill, but um, so today this is a proper video and as you can tell from the title, this is going to be what I hope turns in to a, to a series of videos that never fucking ends. About a, m a month or so ago, I did a, I did a one hour long response video to a video that was an interview with this woman who I had never previously heard of, an Australian health vlogger called Belle Gibson, who had been found out to have been scamming people out of money by pretending that eating vegetables had cured 17,000 types of cancer that she had. I subsequently fell in love with this woman and and um, and I decided the other day, and the other day I was just thinking about it, I thought, well, there's nothing else around, I can't find anything else about her other than this interview. And it's so weird that I can't find anything uh, about this woman. So I sort of just looked up uh, Belle Gibson to see if anything had happened since that interview, anything had appeared in the news about... Oh my fucking God, I found 27 news articles that had been written about this woman since the fucking interview. And I still haven't fucking... She still hasn't gone to fucking court over the first fucking... That interview you saw, that was in 2015. I didn't realise, I thought it was just recently. That was 20 fucking 15. So I thought, I've got to fucking update people as to what's been going on. So now I present to you, if you haven't seen the original one, I'll link to the fucking original video below. You've got to watch it. It is honestly, you know, if you don't, don't take my word for it. If you saw the original, Ask anyone. This is a this woman's a gold mine, and I fucking love her, right? And and I'm gonna go through now. This is every pretty much story that has happened since 2015 up to present day that I could find. Okay, now strap yourselves in. I don't know how long this is gonna take, but I'm gonna get through fucking all of them, right? Let's go. Now, the first story that came about was uh, shortly after the interview, which came from Belle Gibson's mother. And I don't want to suggest that maybe a bit of coddling has taken place in, in Belle Gibson's life that may have led her to this way. But this was the story, this was the headline from her mother. Belle told a white lie. So what? Mother of disgraced wellness blogger Belle Gibson slams critics in U-turn over her estranged daughter, urging them to leave her alone. The article continues. Belle told a white lie, age 23 and a half. So what do you mean age 23 and a half? What? So that's okay, is it? That's the fucking age you're allowed to spell. You're allowed to, t you're allowed to scam cancer patients out of money at 23 and a half. She should be left alone so she can get her life back on track. I'm sorry, Mrs. Dalbello. That ain't fucking gonna happen. Not while I'm fucking breathing, I can tell you. Aside from telling the world she had cancer, which has spread to other vital organs, Miss Gibson claims she was a primary carer for her mother, who suffered from multiple sclerosis, and a brother with autism before leaving home at the age of 12. What a load of rubbish! Belle never cared for me. Her brother is not autistic. No, he just, no one wants to talk to him. And she's barely done a minute's housework in her life, Mrs. Dalbello said, who confirmed that she did have multiple sclerosis. So at least that was true. We found a, we found a truth. Bill said something true. Her mum, you know, it's not, it's not an illness she had, but her mother had it. Come on, give her that one. Give her a point. Both Mrs. Dalbello and Ms. Gibson's 26-year-old brother Nick said they had not known of her rise to online fame until their grandmother had notified them. <laughs> they said they were disgusted, hurt and embarrassed by the lies and confirmed while Ms. Gibson did indeed leave home at the age of 12, the only medical condition she suffered from was a heart problem. I think the problem is she hasn't clearly fucking got one or she's got a lump of coal where there should be one. The next headline, and this one, just, just to show you, let me just say that, Mel, Belle Gibson has not changed. She has not learned anything, and she never will, and God bless her, and this headline shows it more than anything fucking else. Cancer faker Belle Gibson says she doesn't believe she will ever face charges for wrongly telling thousands on social media she had a deadly... She doesn't believe it, and as we know... 
I don't, I don't, if you don't believe it, you have to believe it for it to be real. Ms. Gibson told the Herald Sun on Saturday that she hadn't, uh, that she hadn't already faced charges and said, no, I don't think I will, to a question over whether she believes she ever, no, nah, no, I can't see it happening, nah, it's no big deal, fuck it. Amazing, I wish I had this woman's fucking, I wish I, I wish I could, this is a level of self-delusion that I envy, I wish I could convince myself. Uh, that reality of, of you know of, of living it like living a reality of my own creation to the degree of this woman. Now we get into the real bit, which is her her. Uh, this is this is just if you this is maybe you know this is something you can learn from Bell Gibson. This is all you've got to do if you're ever in trouble with with legal trouble. All you've got to do is pretend it ain't there, right? What's it? Where is Bell Gibson? Wellness blogger fails to appear in court for the second time to fight claims she profited from misleading people by faking cancer. So this is the second time. They didn't, re I didn't find, I couldn't find any report on the phone. This is the second time she's just not fucking turned up. She's like, fuck it, I'm not going in. Disgraced blogger Bell Gibson has been given one more chance. Remember that, one more chance to file defense against court action claiming she made profits by deceiving people into thinking her health regime had cured, uh, cured her of cancer. Barrister Catherine Button for Consumer Affairs Victoria said liquidators had told the federal court they would not appear, but Gibson had given no such notice. She didn't even tell him. They said, did you in court? Like, nah, I'm putting that in. Like a bank statement. Or a fucking, you know, when it says, do you want to check your balance? No, I don't think so. I'll just pretend it doesn't fucking exist. Justice Deborah Mortimer gave Gibson one more chance. What, remember this? One more chance to file defence case by 4 p.m. on July 10th. What shall Consumer Affairs Victoria Gibson wants Gibson to pay a fine, possibly more than one million, and publish newspapers and publish in newspapers an apology to acknowledge her lies, which she still hasn't done, by the way. They've also asked Gibson to advise cancer patients to seek information from medical professionals. Okay. With all due respect, anyone who is still seeking advice from this woman, anyone who needs this woman to fucking tell them to go to the fucking doctor, they're a lost cause, I'm sorry. Cancer milk faker Mel Gibson fails to turn up to court AGAIN! Right, as judge warns, there will be serious consequences, but does she realise court isn't optional? Of course she doesn't! She doesn't believe it's fucking, she doesn't believe she's done anything wrong! Friends of Gibson have reportedly said she is hoping the case will all go away if she ignores it and the court warnings. How can you not love that? This, this, this is why I love this woman. She just thinks, no, it'll go away. If I just ignore it, they'll forget it and fucking move on. Again, when questioned whether she thought she would ever face charges, Gibson says, no, I don't think I will. Because if I'm not there, what are you going to fucking do about it? Now, this next headline, quite frankly, is them just trying to pad this story out, I think, because it's kind of a, well, meh, moment. I always knew this was coming. I called it. Fabricated social media post used by Belle Gibson to trick followers into believing she had cancer to be used against her in court. Well, fucking duh, of course you're going to use the... The thing is, they say they're fabricated media posts, but they're not fabricated posts. The stories are fabricated, but the posts aren't. This was the post they were talking about. Uh, it, 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 it's unfortunate that there is someone in, on my Instagram trying to discredit my natural healing path I am on. As always with everything, this is my journey and I encourage you to do what is best for your body and situation with love and an open mind. I have been healing my severe cancer for the past few years with natural medicine, Gerson therapy and foods. Right? Fucking foods. We remember that. It's working for me and I am great and I am grateful. She went on to claim that she had been tested for two possible secondary cancers and then bragged that she had called it. Imagine getting cancer, imagine getting your third, third and fourth types of cancer and you're like, nailed it! I fucking, what I love as well is that at no point, right, this woman's supposed to be a health blogger, right? And what happened is that this got, the scandal of her lying was, you know, became such a sort of focus that no one focused on the thing that, that, let's say, this woman saying that I did all these things to treat my illness and I got better, but then she comes back and says, oh, I've got four more types of cancer. And no one said, well, clearly this isn't working. Clearly this is, if you, if this was true, if you were getting this ill, clearly your fucking, your, your, your tactics are crap. 
You know, you shouldn't be getting, you should be getting better. But in order for her to perpetuate the lie, she has to get worse. But no one noticed this. In another Instagram post, she wrote, going from six weeks to live to celebrating my fourth year with brain cancer. Celebrating my fourth year with brain cancer. Happy birthday. About 12 weeks after the initial post, she followed up, revealing she was undergoing, I don't know what the fuck this is, and I'm not looking it up, German Integrative Oncology Protocol. Probably bollocks, I imagine, is what, it's, that's, that's what that really means. Uh, most of these headlines uh, you're reading, um, you'll notice they all look very similar. That's because they all came from the Daily Mail. And now, and, and the Daily Mail, I'll be honest, a lot of the times, they've been a bit petty. And uh, in, their, in their criticism of Bell Gibson, because you don't need to really, I don't think anything needs to be done to demonise this woman any fucking further. Right? And nothing really else needs to be done. But here we go. Cleaning up your mess, Bell. Cancer faker Bell Gibson seen at home with mop and bucket. Just days after failing to appear in court for a fourth fucking time. For a fourth, do you remember, do you remember the last, do you remember when there was just one more chance? She's now for the fourth time. And the, the Daily Mail's got snaps and pictures of her at home with a mop and bucket in her hand. Oh, cleaning up your mess, Bill. And the fucking, the, the article itself. In a rare public appearance on Saturday, Gibson tried to hide her face from cameras as she opened the front door and stepped onto the porch to grab a green mop and bucket. After gathering the cleaning items, the disgraced blogger quickly hurried back inside her home. Once she'd seemingly completed her household chores, Gibson reappeared outside her home, shielded by a yellow umbrella and under the careful watch of partner Clive Rothwell. Oh, yes, partner Clive Rothwell. We'll get onto this guy later. Don't worry, right? I don't know, but just wait, right? But do you want to see a picture of Mel Gibson? Like, public appearance, shielding herself. This was this picture they got. That, that, there. There. That's the fucking... I know, devastating, isn't it, right? Okay. But despite being yet to show her face in Melbourne Federal Court, the pictures highlight that Gibson is more than capable of mopping her floors and taking a weekend joyride. I know, it's almost like this woman's full of shit. Right, this is the picture of her taking the joyride, shielded by a yellow umbrella. There she is, and there's Clive Rothwell, that poor son of a bitch. God, we'll get on to him later. Now, this next one is, um, this scandal is, uh, this detracts from, uh, from, uh, Belle Gibson, right? Because she's not the only one who got in a bit of trouble. No, that 60 Minutes interview got in a bit of trouble. Receipts show cancer faker Belle Gibson was paid 75 grand for her tell-all 60 Minute interview. Bill Gibson was paid 60 minutes, 60 minutes. Remittance adv advice dated July 2015 showed two payments were made. Ms. Gibson declined to comment on the revelations when she was approached by The Age. Well, I wonder why. Well, Channel 9 cited network policy as a reason why they could not confirm how much Ms. Gibson... So she could have been paid more than that. Right? She could have been paid more for that interview. And do you know what? Fucking fair play. It was worth every pissing penny. And this just and this just sums up the, the, you know. But bless the people who did this. I understand where you're coming from, but can we live in reality here for a second? The news wide the, the news widespread outrage, and even sparked an online petition calling for the cancer faker to donate the money to medical research. Of course, she's not going to donate it to medical research. What planet do you live on, you lunatics? They can't get this woman to give more than 35p to her. Do you understand what this woman's capable of? Because it's, imp it's important to understand here. When I said she learnt nothing, I really, learnt, um, I really mean that she learnt nothing. And this next headline just goes to show that she is never going to fucking change, right? And check this out. Cancer faker Bell Gibson praises new fad diet claiming it's healing her tooth cavities and changing her eye colour. Now, let's assume, for the fuck, for, just for the fucking crack, that that's true. What benefit is that to anyone? How do you sell an idea? Are you sick and tired of your eyes being the colour they are? Who sells a diet on the... 
That doesn't sound like something that's a, not only not possible, but it doesn't sound like something that's going to make convince someone of a diet that, that you know. Cancer Vega Bell Gibson is endorsing another natural diet. Uh, she bragged about the benefits of the master fast system after just 11 days. Claimed she'd lost four kilograms in 11 days. I think that's. I think if that's true, that's really bad. And it healed tooth cavities and improved her health. MFS uh, uses a combination of fasting techniques and fucking methamphetamine, apparently, it would assume. It claims to give hope to those given a death sentence. Verdict, <laughs> the verdict on the one million civil claim is decided on Wednesday. So this, she's still posting on social media. No shame. No fucking shame. Even Donald Trump would be like, for God's sake, woman, have some humility. Hello, my loves. Wow, what blessed week. So I don't know if this was a short month of February or if I lost count and confused myself, but I thought today was, my, it was the two-week mark of my full MFS. Turns out it's actually day 10. Nice to know you're dedicated to this fucking diet, Bell. Still great, but damn happy two-week celebration dance in bed this morning with, for no reason. Right? <laughs> Yesterday, I had a big day of self-care, which was lucky because after having my my tinctures, five hours... I don't have a... Cl she's just making words up at this point. Right? But then, get this, she even claimed to have expelled two rope worms measuring 15 and 60 centimetres during an enema. Right, but missed getting them on video. Jesus Christ, thank the Lord. Right, who the fuck has an enema? Gets the. <laughs> Look at the fucking. Who would, who's gonna post that? It was truly a day like none other. Right, then in the same release, of, at least a huge rope worm. I'm talking enormous. It ruined my. It ruined my day. Almost not being able to get it on video. This woman is mental. Right now, this is something to do. Now, this is this is just some stuff that's from the website I saw. I there. If anyone can make it, this is a Venn diagram of absolute. I've stared at this for hours and not understood what the fuck it what the fuck it means. Miss Gibson then went on to claim that her tonsils were thirty percent smaller. Who measures that? How big are your tonsils? I don't know. I certainly don't know enough to fucking know whether they're 30% smaller. How big do they... Who... I couldn't believe it. I literally started to doubt whether I was going mad. What? Well, you're miles behind everyone else at this point, Bell. MFS was created by Canadian alternative health entrepreneur Luigi Deserio Di and claims to offer hope to those given a death, death sentence. If you want to know what Luigi looks like, there he is. Look at that there, you can't forget, you, how can you not trust that man? Never trust anyone whose eyebrows are a different colour from the rest of their body, that's what I fucking say. Now this, this is an example of, of cynical people trying to leech off of Bell's fame here, and I find it quite frankly very cynical. Uh, the Yinga, this headline, I don't feel sorry for her, I feel sorry for the people she ripped off. Rebecca Judd. I, I don't know either. Weighs in on Bell Gibson after wellness blogger falsely claimed to have brain cancer, blah, blah, blah. I have no idea who this woman is, but luckily the article tells us she is a wag-turned-lifestyle blogger with legions of adults. Wag, for those who don't know, is an acronym for wives and girls. Meaning, she's fa meaning this woman is famous. She's married to someone famous. Wag is a term that used to be used for, like, footballers' wives, like, who became famous for whatever reason, right? You know, the, and, uh, so basically this woman's married to someone who's very successful, and now she's a lifestyle blogger, right? It, you know, and, and she's taking the very brave stance, right? She's taking the very controversial stance of feeling sorry for Bell Gibson's victims and not Bell Gibson, right? Although that doesn't really, that isn't really the case because... You know, she she says that she doesn't feel sorry for her. She said, I don't. I feel sorry for the victims. But then later on in the article, she says, "I almost feel sorry for her because she's only 25." Excuse me. Excuse me. She you you say that, but she believes she's 26, right? And even though this is about a year and a half after the fucking interview, when she would actually be. I don't know what age she fucking believes it, but so she's basically just come out as being a really big kid. Yet so. Well done. Well, thank you. Well, thank you very much, Miss Judd. Your your contribution is well fucking was well necessary there. But anyway, the court case went ahead. 
Obviously, Bell wasn't there. And, well, this was the headline. Fake Australian cancer blogger gets hefty fine. Australian blogger who faked brain cancer and professed to have cured her disease with natural therapies was fined 410,000 Australian dollars, that's 320,000 US dollars, on Thursday over false, over false claims. In one of the most of, of the serious instances, Gibson promised a week's earnings to a family whose child had a brain tumour. She did this to encourage members of the public to buy her product and she did, she, she told a family whose child had brain cancer she would give them a week's earnings and then apparently loads of people went out and bought her product to fucking give, make sure she had, and she went, nah. Okay, I didn't realise it, but that's a lot. I, I'm keeping that. Amazing. Friends then began to cast doubts about her cancer diagnosis, leading her to tearfully admit that, that this is amazing. She may have been misdiagnosed by a Dr. Phil. Who the fuck is Dr. Phil? I thought, what happened to Mark Johns? Mark Johns is the guilty pie, not Dr. Phil. Now we start getting into some more interesting news stories because because there was a book released. Um, the book was called uh, The Woman Who Fooled the World, right? And uh, it's a book that um, basically goes through uh, interview these two people. They interviewed all these people. They interviewed all these people connected with it to find out you know how much this woman, how far she's gone. And um, I, I haven't read the book yet, but I will be soon. But just to give you an idea of some of the stories that are in here. No, because you've realised that this woman's so much... You, you thought she was bad? Oh, it's about to get so much worse. Just when you thought she couldn't sink any lower, cancer faker Bell Gibson crashed a wellness blogger's funeral after she had died from the disease, even crying on the grieving shoulder of her fiancé. And it's not just any wellness blogger. It's not just a wellness blogger she happened to know. She wasn't invited. She crashed the funeral. The 26-year-old spoke about her terminal illness at length and released a book and app and blah, blah, blah. So, so invested in her own life, she even managed to bring it up at the funeral of a woman who actually was diagnosed with cancer and had been trying to cure herself through healthy eating. While Belle Gibson and Jess were friendly on social media, they were not close friends, as she had told others after to their initial meeting left Jess feeling less than impressed. So she, this woman didn't even like her. They met once. The wellness warrior, as she was known, reportedly told friends soon after meeting the cancer fraud, something was off about her. You don't say? After Jess's funeral, Gibson then turned up at the private and intimate wake for the woman and continued to cry hysterically for Jess, but also for herself. The book claims that she told that she told her fiance her heart was breaking and she was petrified of dying the way his partner had. My fucking god! The pair had never even met before, though Mr. Mr. Pimenta said that he had seen Gibson's social media profiles. This poor son of a bitch! This poor bastard! He was being tormented by this woman crashed his wife's funeral and made it all about her and then cried on his shoulder. But no, no, it gets fucking worse. It was so violent, the adults were crying. Belle Gibson was so desperate to convince people she had cancer, she faked a 40 minute fit at her son's fourth birthday party in front of shocked friends and family. Bill Gibson lay on the floor, jerking violently in an apparent seizure, surrounded by horrified friends and family at her son's fourth birthday. But none of the dozens of guests called an ambulance, despite it going on for 40 minutes because she didn't like getting hospitals involved. Yeah, I, I bet you fucking feel... Why do you think that is? I'm sorry, I would think, fuck, I, I'd fuck what she, whether she likes getting hospitals involved. I'd call a frigging ambulance. You people are, you people are morons of the highest order. It was, no, 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 this has happened before, everything's going to be alright. Oh yeah, she has violent sieges that go on for 40 minutes, no, it's perfectly fucking normal. We're there shoving foods down her, Gerson therapy, Jit Bell, Gerson therapy. Two weeks later, Gibson claimed she had been diagnosed with a third and fourth cancer in addition to the alleged tumour in her brain. One is secondary and the other is primary. I have cancer in my blood, spleen, brain, uterus and liver. I am hurting. No shit! Buy my app. 
You'll be healthy if you want to fucking cure your disease. Buy my hat, says the woman with fucking five types of fucking cancer. Questions were being asked on the internet. People started posting comments about Gibson's story, how it seemed to lack important detail. Hmm, yes, yes, the authors observed. How her lifestyle didn't seem to reflect the deteriorating health she reported online. How she managed to outlive her doctor's prognosis for a type of cancer that is so, so aggressive. Hmm, yeah. Right. How she didn't follow any cancer organisations and never called for more funding to support brain cancer research. Yes, and the fact that, let's be honest, curing cancer by eating vegetables is fucking impossible. How about that? Did that one not fucking spring into your head? Now, earlier you saw Rebecca Judd fucking put her two cents in on this story, trying to get some fucking attention for herself, trying to leech over. But that is nothing. That is at least connected. She's a wellness lifestyle blogger. This was the same. So fair enough, right? But this has got to be the most desperate attempt. This has got to be the most cynical, desperate attempt for someone trying to leech fame off of... You know, or trying to affect this guy. This guy seemed really suspicious about this guy. Exclusive. I've created a monster. Bill Gibson's acting teacher is sickened. The fake can the cancer faker used his drama techniques to con thousands and reveals she would do anything to seem more interesting. Bill Gibson's acting coach says the cancer faker used her methods for evil. Jonathan Duffy taught Gibson at acting camp in the mid to late 2000s. The penny dropped, oh my god, I've created a monster, Mr. Duffy said, who happens to be an actor you've never fucking heard of. Oh, by the way, he's got a website. The truth quickly set in for entertainer Jonathan Duffy, now 31. Oh my god, I've created a monster. Yes, Jonathan, it's almost your fault. I hope you're fucking proud of it. Why are we giving you, you... Is it me, or does this guy seem to be, you know, want to be taking credit for this? Do you put this on your fucking acting CV when you're applying for work? I'm the guy who taught Belle Gibson. Yes, look how successful she fucking did. Without cheapening the sentiment of the moment, oh, God forbid, Jonathan, right, it was like a moment in some kind of Hollywood film, and it's as close as you'll ever get, Mr. Duffy, where you go, oh, my God, I've created a monster. The penny dropped. I know where I know her from. Mr. Duffy was a coach at Australian Acting Academy, a beautiful institution which ran camps for teenagers in the holidays. You think that you can train someone to be th to be a good actor for in a summer camp. I, I think you are greatly taking away and not giving Belle Gibson the... She is a naturally gifted performer, my friend. I, I take this as someone who knows bullshit, my friend. I've seen people. She's one of the best out there. The camps taught different acting disciplines and subjects, including realism, character work, and improvisation. Well, I think we can tell from that fucking 60 Minutes interview that improvisation was not one of her strong points. I think you failed her on that one, Jonathan. He said he has very clear memories of Mel Gibson, which are, of Bell Gibson, which apparently these clear memories of Bell Gibson, apparently he didn't have them. He didn't figure this out until this was around about late 20, this is around about 2018. This story came out. Right. So he so it took him this long. It took him two years after this to fucking realise that this one of his pupils had become basically fucking Darth Vader. Well done, Jonathan. Who else have you fucking Who else have you fucking educated in this fucking in the fine arts of ripping off fucking diseased people? I still say this to young comedians, you are enough. Don't try and make the story more interesting than it is because somebody's already written it. What sh just on a side note, as a fellow comedian, what shit advice? Don't try and make a story more interesting. That's literally the point of the fuck. You're the actor, just tell the story and try and make, what, just fuck off. Just fuck off. You are, you're in fact worse than her. Right? Because you are trying to fucking leech your, you're trying to fucking promote your own fucking career as an actor off of her, off of the misery she has created. She is your star pupil and you're on, you went to a new pad, you're bragging about this. You have no stake in this story and you have no place in being in it. It's of no consequence whatsoever. None. And you're fucking leeching off it. You're worse than her. 
But they end this story, and this is the best part. In September, Ms. Gibson was fined $410,000 by the federal court after being found guilty of blah, blah, blah. She did not appear after being... She did not, she did not appear, but after being informed of the result, told the court via email, thank you, much appreciated. Amazing. Oh, cheer, 400. Oh, okay, thanks a lot. Thanks for letting me know. Bye. Now things start spicing up a little bit. Now they're just now they're basically just looking for any excuse to put her in there. And even and, and in typical Daily Mail fashion, even dealing with someone as reprehensible as Bill Gibson, they still manage to somehow post articles that 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 that, that, that debunk themselves. Right, the, the next one exclusive: a sparkly engagement ring and p park playdates. How cancer faker Belle Gibson is getting on with life after dodging jail and her sick fraud, but has she paid her four hundred and ten thousand dollar fine? Spoiler alert: No. This is the next bit. This is the bit that's fucking hilarious. Gibson was far from delighted to spot a news reporter who noted her ring was not crazy small, but not crazy big. Here are the photographs that sh that they took that just show you how not delighted Mel Gibson, Belle Gibson was. Oh, there she is, smiling for the camera. And why not give him a little wave, Bell? Oh, there you go. Just hello. Yeah, she looks well bothered, doesn't she? It's unclear whether Gibson is working. Uh. No, I don't think. What fucking impl? How is she gonna get a job like ever? Right, unless she like changes her name, has reconstructive surgery, right, and moves fucking and moves moves to another country. How the fuck is she gonna get a pissing job? She has posted comments online expressing interest in launching a dating app. Oh, please do! I will download that motherfucker in an instant. And in case you weren't sure, the next head, the next story was this: disgraced cancer faker Bill Gibson still owes four hundred and ten thousand dollar fine for duping Australian consumers with wellness products. And just to show you how well bothered Bill Gibson is, here's a photograph of her that they took. Oh, look, she's so distressed, doesn't she? The 26-year-old was described by as having a relentless obsession with herself, has failed to pay up in over six months. The federal court has strict procedures regarding enforcement of its orders. Yeah, and you're doing a fucking good job, ain't ya? Do you remember? Do you remember? Eight, do you remember all those years ago when there was one last chance, Bell? You better turn up. Uh, at the time, Consumer Affairs Victor Victoria Acting Director Elizabeth Lanyon said the penalty showed that those seeking to profit from deceptive misleading or unconscionable conduct would be held to account. You've held nothing to account. This woman has just carried on like it ain't no big thing. She's just dusting you off like you ain't shit. You have held, nothing has been held to account here. This woman has had zero repercussions for her actions. All she's had to do is not turn up and not react and not acknowledge that you exist. And the only acknowledgement was the email she sent you going, cheers, lol, bye. And not just, just to show you that Belle isn't rubbing it in or anything, the next story, cancer faker Belle Gibson spends $15,000 on five-week luxury African safari, but still hasn't paid her $410,000 fine for milking half a million dollars from sick Australians. The one other interesting thing about this is apparently Belle Gibson uh, in Australia, um, apparently she was, she, she is still an inspirational figure. Now, whereas before she was inspiring people um, to, you know, uh, you know, forego cancer treatment and actual helpful cancer treatment and just eat vegetables and believe, right, in that interview, now she's an inspiration to, you know, to unscrupulous uh, you know, just money grabbing whores, right? So this one, accused cancer faker, 26, pretended to have a deadly disease to scam more than nine thousand dollars from her closest friends and family, who they thought was dying. Now you think, now does that, that nine thousand dollars? Now what does that doesn't sound like Bell? Because it's not Bell. It's a new person completely called Asia Rose Goering. That's a fucking unfortunate name, isn't it? Goering, 26, of Carolina Springs, is accused of ripping off large number of her friends and family while pretending to have a deadly disease between March and April of last year. I don't even reckon she's 26. I just reckon that's the thing you got to do. She just believed, she was brought up to believe that she would be 26. And yeah, and this is where she makes the big mistake. Goering, <laughs> her name is Goering. 
I might, she might as well just be called Hitler at this point. Goering appeared in court. There's your mistake, darling. You appeared in court, accompanied by a man and a letter from your lawyer asking for your case to be adjourned. Just a letter. You Even your lawyer was like, fuck this shit. I ain't turning up. Here's a letter from me telling him to fucking cancel it. No, she's not the only one. There's another one here. Fellow cancer scammer Hannah Dickinson was jailed last year for three months for a similar deception before it was overturned on appeal to a two-year community corrections order with 200 hours of unpaid community work. Dickinson was 24. Apparently she didn't believe she was 26 enough right, when she pleaded guilty to seven charges of this is the mistake you dumb women you, you dumb cows you don't go to fucking court this is Hannah Dixon here she there's her smiling away but there's your fucking there's the queen right fucking there Australia's most notorious cancer faker and still number one Belle Gibson was warned in November she could go so in the time that Belle Gibson has been fucking you know has been Find and gone a court case gone, and she's ignored all of the these two women got tried and convicted in that time but they can't get her i'm st the, i don't know, the, it sounds awful but the more i read about this the more i love this woman however ladies and gentlemen i am sorry to say that um that bill gibson's attempts to avoid the court eventually did come to a head uh and she was uh she did she what she did eventually go okay i'll go in I'll, if it'll get you off my call, get you off my case. But again, in Daily Mail fashion, them reporting this, they have to be a bit petty. All a bit tiring, Belle. A dishevelled cancer faker, Belle Gibson, yawns as she prepares to face court, uh, court grilling over why she has failed to pay 410k in fines for lying about curing her brain cancer naturally. And not to, to and just to, just to emphasise the pettiness, they they throw this little sh bit of shade in. Gibson's fall from grace has moved only slightly faster than her fall from fashion sense. Oh! <sighs> Saucer of milk, table nine. Rawr! Then we get on to, then we get on to this geezer, Clive Rothwell. Now you remember Clive Rothwell, he's the geezer, you know, he's her partner who's still with her through all of this. So I'm getting, this has to have happened. I never, he was never mentioned before. There's no mention of him before. So this must have happened. Oh, can you imagine? Right? Right. The mystery man behind Belle Gibson, the generous benefactor whose gifts the cancer, cancer faker luxury holidays pays her legal bills and lets her use his car while he cycles everywhere and she doesn't know what he does for a living. I think she could give a shit at this fucking point. Belle Gibson fronted the federal court to explain why she hasn't paid her fine. Her housemate... Clive Rothwell jumped on his bicycle and made a hasty exit. Fucking right, he's not that stupid, is he? Gibson claims Mr. Rothwell pays most of her, most of her and her child's living expensive. Mm -hmm. right. Gibson lives in a pretty weatherboard home home in World, Melbourne's inner north. Right. And the person who wrote this, it's just so pretentious. It's like one of those fucking Yelp reviews that's written by some fucking failed food reviewer that you just go, oh, for fuck's sake, you know. An energy bill sits in the letterbox behind a brilliant white picket fence of Belle Gibson's home in Melbourne's leafy inner north. It is a bill that will likely be paid for by a mysterious man who shares the rental property with the notorious con woman. Clive Rothwell was identified by Gibson as the person who has been effectively bankrolling her lifestyle since she was exposed as a complete fraud. Mr Rothwell made a hasty retreat from their Northcote property home on Wednesday morning amid a flurry of questions from media horde. He was last seen riding his push bike down their well-to-do street and was not seen again all day. And there's a picture of Clive. Gibson made a similar retreat, but in Mr. Rothwell's Peugeot, weaving in and out of the side street to dodge the pursuing media like a woman who had been trained in the dark arts of counter-surveillance. What do you mean the dark arts of counter surveillance, you melo you this is a story about Mel Gibson and you're the one being melodramatic now. The dark arts of counter surveillance, what driving away from media that have been following you around non stop for the last three fucking years. Gibson has been seen in public with Mr. Rothwell since 2015 when she was exposed as a fraudster. The 27-year-old said she now pays the rent on her Northcote home month to month, which is paid for largely by Mr. Rothwell. I think by largely she means in all. The lease is expired. Well done, Mel. Cheers for... I contribute when I can. It varies. It varies between not much and fuck all, right? Okay. 
He paid for her legal fees, including $5,500 for lawyers who represented her in federal court. I'm not aware of the exact amount I owe him. There is no record as such. But in a letter Gibson wrote to the Department of Justice, she revealed she owed Ro Mr. Rothwell $90,000. <laughs> fucking hell. Are you paying that black back in fucking, you know, weekly blowjobs and anal? Gibson told the federal court Mr. Rothwell paid the bills out of the kindness of his heart and she was not romantically involved. And it's not romantically, she, she is involved with him. There's a relationship of convenience here. I think, you know, you know th there's no other relationship. You can imagine him, you know, he's got his money to burn. He's like, right, darling, right. You're it, you're desperate. You're it, you need somewhere to hide. I'm, you know, I'm late middle aged. I've got, I'm well off. I've got some money. I'm trying to fuck, you know, I need someone to just blow me once a week. I'm not asking for much, you know. Gibson claims she did not know what Mr. Riddle did for, did for a living or what he earned. It's not my business. She hasn't thought to ask him. It's none of my business who this man who I'm living with, who's bankrolling my lifestyle, it's none of my concern. What, why would I be so gauche? This is a funny bit. Now, this is just a bit they had on the side, and this is got this is not addition to the story, right? But they decided because it's been a while, because they finally got into court, and because this story's been going on for a while, they decided they would have a little sort of summary. So they posted this bit. Uh, that, that this is, uh, and as you can see at the top, it says how it happened. But zoom in on the first fucking bit there at the top. How it happened. Number one, October 1991. Bill Gibson is born. May 2008, Gibson claims to have... Wait a minute, what is the... Is it necessary? Is the first bit necessary? Do you need the first bit? We don't need to know that she was born in 1991. Is that just in case? Is that just for the people who... Uh, no. Who, is that just to confirm? We're not sure how... You know, is this for the people who, are, who believe she's still 26? She was born in 1991. Is that when she believes she was born? Why would you put she was born in... Is this anyone else's thing? So, oh no, she has existed since the beginning of time itself. She still denied that she dined out of restaurants and attended movies, but could not say how much she spent a week. She said she spent about $300 a year on medical expenses. Yeah. And, uh, and was covered by health insurance for dental expenses, which is no fucking good, because thanks to that other diet plan she's doing, her fucking teeth have healed themselves. However, she revealed she suffered from back pain. Right, is that it, Bill? Is that it, Bill? That's what you've been reduced to. Fucking back pain, love. Just back pain. You went from having 17 different types of cancer and AIDS of the soul, and now you've got pissing back pain. She did not currently outlay any cash on mental health. I think that might be part of the problem there. Right, you think, wouldn't it be amazing if this guy had no idea? He's just started dating this woman randomly, right? As some kind of fucking sugar daddy, and like, and he's like, why are these fucking, why are there all these reporters always outside their house? What's what's going on? As she was leaving the court, she was heard to say, "I think it's sad that the media have been reduced to covering stories like this. They should be covering more important films." I'm sorry, Mel. I'm sorry, Bell. Sorry, darling. I can't agree with you there. Right? You're right. There are much more important things that I could be making these fucking videos that are four and a half hours long about. But I'm sorry. None of them are as fucking interesting as you. My client doesn't have unlimited resources to pay for lawyers to assist her in this. She can't afford to come back. That is an amazing fucking defence, isn't it? That's the lawyer. She's the, that's her defence saying she can't afford to come back to court. She can only afford the one trip to court. The matter will return to court next month. But again, she's not seeing this. But again, like she said, she's not seeing this guy. She doesn't know how much. To, she, she doesn't know how much is being spent. And she doesn't even, they don't even have that much money. Next story. Oh, wedding bells. Cancer faker Gibson shows off expensive diamond ring just days after claiming she had no money to pay for lying to thousands of followers. The stunning diamond band was nowhere to be seen as Gibson fronted the federal court to explain why she couldn't, uh, she couldn't pay the $410,000 for duping Australians, right? And then a week later, just to show again, she's really fucking thought this one through. Oh, disgraced wellness blogger spotted buying fucking shoes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that brings you 
fully up to date, right? I will make, uh, you know, maybe if I, once I've read this fucking book, I'll give you a full fucking review, and I will keep fucking, you know, keep an eye out on everything. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is the full updated Bell Gibson story. My name is Dick Coughlin, and this is my channel, Brother Neuro. If you would like to, if you enjoyed this video, please check out my other videos and subscribe if you, if you want to see more. And please consider supporting me on Patreon or making a donation via PayPal. This is what I do. This is my, this is supposed to be my job. This is what I need uh, in order to carry on living. So please, you know, if you want to support someone on YouTube who, you know, who needs your help, support me. Right. My name's Brother Nero. Where there's no sense, there's no feeling. Good night. May God be less. Love this woman. <laughs>